Hi there, DW Berman here, and I'm here to talk to you about gradients in Lightwave. And uh, you might be asking, why am I in Photoshop if I'm doing a Lightwave thing? Well, I want to just bring this in. If you're coming from an art world, uh, you might think of a gradient as oops, basically fading from one color to another. Like here we have red fading into green, and that's pretty hideous. And that's what you got. In uh, Photoshop, you can take it a step further than that. Uh, you can, uh, let's say, let me add some text in here. You know, you're thinking, I'm a cool designer. I'm going to make myself a cool logo or something, and it's going to be called cool. And you can come over here to your uh, your effects tab, and uh, let me add a gradient overlay. Let's make it cooler. Like, we're, like, in the desert, and, and our... our logo is made out of chrome and maybe throw a little emboss and bevel on there oh that's sweet that's pretty spiffy right you can do that in in photoshop uh, you can also uh click on this button here <laughs> we have this one Ooh, that's that Ooh, that's like 90s isn't it that's so cool living the dream baby uh but if you're really super cool with uh gradients in Photoshop you can also you know click on this little button down here and you can make a mat for your your background a mask and you can set a gradient there and you can make your layer partly partially transparent and that's pretty spiffy you can control transparency with a gradient in Photoshop that's amazing kids write home to their mommies about that not really and also up here you have different types of gradients. Here we have linear gradient, which is this straight one. We have radial gradient. This is kind of like it's based on the center and it's fading out towards the end. And then we have this little uh, clock type thing here. And I don't know if I've ever actually used that for anything. The angle gradient. Then we have the uh, reflected gradient. Again, it's just kind of basing the uh, the gradient on where the mouse starts and where it ends and anything it fades from there to there and yeah and the diamond and that's cool and of course you know you have transfer modes and stuff so you can make pictures lighter and and all of that make them hideously ugly and that's basically what you can do in in a 2d program with gradients and there might be some other uses that i'm missing but uh... let's jump over to lightwave and and see what we got there here I am in Lightwave, and using the default configs, if you put a gradient on something in the layer system over here, you won't see it on the screen. So let me hit O for uh, preferences. You could probably hit D for display options or some such nonsense. Go to the GL tab, and you go down to uh, Geometry Acceleration. Uh, not that one. The one above that. Shading method. If you change that to GLSL Shaders, you'll be able to see your gradient in your OpenGL if you're using the, the layer system over here, which is what I'm just doing. But since I'm in Lightwave 10 and we have the VPR Previewer, I'll just turn that on and there we have it. There's our fantastic gradient in Lightwave. And as you can see, it's pretty much like what we would have in Photoshop. It's just kind of starting... Uh, Actually, it's starting up here at the top and fading down to, to one meter away from the, the center there. That's all well and, and, and good, but we can do that in Photoshop. What's the big deal about having gradients in Lightwave? Well, let me uh, copy the selected layer and uh, clear it out of there. Let me paste my gradient into the luminosity channel. Now we have the gradient determining the light emission in this object. Not only can we control color and luminosity, but we can use gradients to control diffusion, which determines if light is reflected or absorbed by a surface. Specularity, which is Lightwave's way of faking reflection of a light source. Glossiness, which works in conjunction with the specularity to determine how shiny or dull the surface looks. Reflections. Transparency. The incidence of refraction, which determines how light is bent when passing through transparent surfaces. And basically anything in Lightwave with a T or texture editor button next to it. And that's just the surface settings. In Lightwave, you can use gradients to control an object's deformations, the properties of particle emitters, hypervoxels, and that's not even getting into the more advanced things you can do with gradients in the node editor. So there's a lot of ground to cover.